Okay. Well, good evening. Good evening. Um, I am Courtney Gallagher, your social worker for today. Um, would you like to tell me your name and uh, some, some quick stuff about you? Uh, my name is Michaela. Um, uh, I've been married to my husband for about two years. Um, we've been in college. Mm -hmm. um, he's actually why I'm here today. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, we will get into that in a second, but first I want to really quickly talk to you about uh, confidentiality and the limits to confidentiality. Um, for the most part, what you tell me will stay between you and I, um, completely confidential, except for a couple instances. Uh, if you are telling me that you're going to hurt yourself or someone else, uh, if it seems that there's a child in danger, or if the court subpoenas my notes, in those cases, then the confidentiality will be broken. But outside of that, everything that you say in our session stays between you and I. Okay. You understand all that? Yes, I do. Okay, good. So what, uh, what brings you in? What is it about your husband that you'd like to talk, talk about? Um, he's a really great guy. Um, you know, he's very kind. Um, but he lost his job during the pandemic. It's been really hard on all of us. Um, he definitely was more of the higher income earner. Um, I work, I only work part-time now. Um, my hours were kind of shortened as a result of the pandemic. Um, so we had some savings. Um, we're kind of almost through those. Um, and it's just been hard, like financially. Um, and that's putting a lot of stress and like strain on our relationship. Um, and he says he's been looking for work. Um, nothing's really seeming to come of that. He's had the odd interview, but it's been about a year that he's been looking and I just kind of thought it'd be further along um, mm -hmm. in that search. That makes yeah, sense. okay. Um, what is it that you do for work? Um, I work part-time as a cashier. Okay, and how are you feeling about that, having your hours cut on top of your husband not being able to provide as much as he used to? It, it was okay in the beginning when he was like still working. It wasn't like, it, was, it wasn't like a major hit. You know, we kind of cut corners here and there, not mm -hmm. going out as much, um, you know, staying home, not that there was really much to go out and do. Mm -hmm. um, but then when he lost his job, it was really stressful. Um, so I just try to pick up any shift I can anywhere, even if like I've already worked all day and now I have to work all night. Yeah. Um, so on top of kind of the stress from him not really working, um, there's also kind of stress like we don't really see each other. Um, so yeah, it's just been hard. Yeah. It's it's a lot to take on. You're clearly uh, handling a lot in your personal life and in your professional life. Uh, have you and your husband talked about uh, how you're feeling and how much pressure you're being put under because he's not working and he's having trouble finding a job? Um, we've tried to, um, but okay. it, it seems to be a bit of a sensitive topic. Um, whenever I kind of bring up like, I'll just be like, hey, um, any interviews coming up? anything interesting you've applied to he he kind of it's almost it's almost like a trigger okay. um I'm not Tell me sure. more about that um he was just he got he'll get very upset about it very quick um mm -hmm. and he's just a different person like he will just yell <laughs> about it <laughs> um and that's not really a side of him that I'm used to seeing. So it's definitely, it's definitely different. Yeah, well, that sounds like it could be awfully scary from someone who you care about and you know so well. It Have is. you expressed to him at all that that makes you feel kind of um, unsafe or upset, for lack of a better word, or... Um, I haven't, just okay. because based on this reaction, asking him about 
work. I'm not too sure what his reaction would be to me telling him that he makes me feel unsafe. Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely, yeah. Yeah, I see how that could be the case. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Is there um, anything that you and your husband do together um, that helps alleviate some of your stress and helps you cope and kind of um, disconnect from the stresses you're under? Um, we used to like going out to the movies, um, going out for coffee, um, just little things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's obviously not something that's very doable <laughs> right now. Um, so we haven't really had an opportunity to kind of do what we normally do mm -hmm. as a coping strategy, I guess. Um, and with communication just being so strained, um, I just kind of always feel like I'm almost walking on eggshells around him. Like I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to get him mad. Um, yeah. So it's definitely a bit of a turning point. It's been a big change um, recently. Well, for sure. It sounds like you're under uh, a lot of pressure and I imagine that that's very anxiety inducing. Um, when you say that you feel like you're walking on eggshells about him, what do you mean by that? Can you tell me more? Um, I just, it, it, it's just like, I'm afraid to say the wrong thing. If I say the wrong thing, he'll, he'll get mad. Um, and, you know, I don't, I've already seen him mad. I don't want to see him get any more mad. Um, mm -hmm. I have no idea what, if he would escalate, what would happen if he escalated. Um, that's not necessarily something I would like to find out the answer mm -hmm. to. Um, however, I just, I, I just, I really like if he would start working again. Mm -hmm. um, he just, he seems to like spending money and not making it. So, that's also a bit of an issue when I'm only working part-time and yeah. trying to pay all of our bills. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have other people in your life who uh, can offer support for you and who you can talk to about how you're feeling outside of your husband? Um, I have a couple of friends, but um, they all kind of have their own things going on. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm burdening them with my issues. Um, so I haven't really been leaning on anyone for support just because everyone's going through a really tough time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of like, well, what makes, what, what makes me an exception to this? Like, I don't want to burden anyone. I don't want to add to anyone's stress. So. Yeah, I definitely understand what um, you're saying there about not wanting to add to your loved one's stress and burden them with your problems. But I also think that maybe as, um, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of therapy homework, um, you should try to reach out to a friend or maybe a family member, um, before the next session to just talk to them a little bit, someone that you trust, of course, um, if you're comfortable to see what they think and if they have any, uh, guidance to offer you, I think that it might be helpful to get perspective from someone in your life and then, you know, we can talk about how that conversation goes and then maybe work up to another conversation with your husband. Okay. How do you feel about that? I think that's a good plan. I think um, having those, your outside perspective and another sort of outside perspective that would kind of give me like the comfort, um, maybe like the guidance, the words I need to kind of start this conversation. And if it doesn't work out, you know someone that I can turn to for support somewhere where I can kind of just go to cool off yeah um I think yeah I can definitely see the, like the benefits in reaching out to someone yeah great um so to circle back to what you were saying earlier about feeling kind of anxious and like you're walking on eggshells when you're around your husband um on a scale of one to ten how do you feel on a given day when you guys are together from one being no anxiety at all and 10 being just can't focus on anything super, super anxious. Mm, 
I would say it goes between like a six to an eight, um, kind of depending on how much we're around each other, um, how much time we spend together, like how often, I guess, we're in the same space is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay. You know, if I'm working a lot, I don't see him. I would say it's probably closer to like a six because I'm still kind of worried. I'm like, oh, well, is he going to like what if he calls me and then like we get in an argument on the phone and then I have to worry about like there's just kind of always like little things in the back of my mind where I'm like oh what if this happens or this could happen or if this happens and then mm -hmm. there's the worry about money on top of that which I guess is also kind of playing into the anxiety and kind of keeping it that minimal six yeah for sure do you have any uh anything that you do to kind of ground yourself when you get into that really anxious headspace about whether or not your husband's going to call you or if you're going to have a fight when you get home? Um, not necessarily. I, I'll take a deep breath or two, but okay. not super effective. Okay. Um, would you be interested in discussing some things that you could do to help maybe come down a little bit and ground yourself, maybe take the anxiety down one or two levels? Yeah, I would really appreciate that. Okay. Um, I know you said that breathing doesn't really help, so I'm not going to get into box breathing and deep breathing. Um, not for everyone. Something that um, might be good to try, especially if you're out and you're working as a cashier, is um, going through your senses, five things that are around you that you could see or touch or hear or smell and just kind of list things off. Um, another one that I have found to be helpful is uh, finding a poster or a label, register, something that's around you at the time, and uh, reading everything on it forwards and backwards and say each letter out loud, and it kind of provides a bit of a distraction so that you're not getting those catastrophizing thoughts and spiraling. Okay. Okay. So if you're comfortable, I would be interested in hearing more about that next week after you've, you know, maybe tried out some of these strategies so we can see if any of them were helpful or if we can talk about some other ones that might be more helpful for you. Okay. Okay. Um, so I would now like to um, ask you a quick question, do a little bit of a, a thought exercise with you, if that's all right. Okay. So I'd like you to imagine that uh, you go to sleep tonight and while you're asleep, a miracle occurs and uh, all of the problems and stressors that you're currently experiencing have gone away because of this miracle that's occurred, but you were asleep, so you didn't know about it. When you wake up, what is the first things that would tell you that the miracle has occurred and that your problems are no longer there? I, I think the first thing I would notice is that I was probably being woken up by my husband's alarm because um, when he was working, he, regardless of what time he had to be at work, um, he was always up by six. His alarm went off at six. He was right up out of bed at six. Um, so I think that like it would like I, his alarm would be going off for him to kind of get up and start his day. And I think that would be my first indication that something's changed. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, later on in your day, whenever it would be that your husband would come back from work? Would there be other indications for you that your anxieties and stressors are gone outside of, obviously he's at work? <laughs> um, when he would come home, he, he's very, um, he was very like routine oriented, not so much anymore. Um, when he would come home, he would, um, put his containers, his lunch, all of that. He would sort that out, whether it was the dishwasher, the sink, and make sure those were all clean, whatever had to be washed by hand. Um, and that would kind of all be sorted. Um, yeah, like <laughs> those would be my kind of indicators that change had happened. Um, yeah, for sure. Okay. So. Um, what I would be curious about next then is if we could, um, in future sessions, talk about ways that you could maybe start introducing routine back into your lives. 
because that might help take some of that anxiety off of you, even if he isn't going to get a job right away and interviews aren't going to appear all of a sudden. Um, you know, maybe if uh, permitting, you know, as long as uh, your shifts permit, being able to get up together in the morning and start your day together mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of encourage each other to, you know, go off to work for you and to surf the internet or go through the paper and look for interviews for him, like being able to start your day like that together might help uh, give both of you a little bit more um, of a, a relaxed vibe and, you know, a better connection. Okay. Yeah. Like I understand, yeah, I understand that, you know, I'm automatically getting back into a job is obviously not going to happen right away. It would be um, nice though. <laughs> it would be, it'd be very nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think kind of getting back into our routine would definitely be a good starting point. Um, it, yeah, it definitely was, it was a good way, mm -hmm. um, you know, we might bring back how everything used to be. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I can definitely see the benefits in that. Yeah. And it might not change things right away. And you know, we don't want to throw a whole lot at uh, yourself or your husband because that's just going to, you know, result in more stress and more anxiety. But being able to kind of slowly change things like, like routine and, you know, maybe that'll help get both of you a little more into the, uh, the swing of things. Okay. Is there... Anything else you'd like to uh, talk about in our session today? No, I think you've given me some really good um, information, some really good um, tips on kind of how to slowly begin um, working towards change. Um, and I'm gonna work on kind of bringing them all in um, slowly. Um, hopefully that'll like, work towards reducing some anxiety um, and improving our communication. Um, but yeah, this is, I got a lot out of it today. It definitely Great. was what I needed. Thanks so much, Michaela. And when we talk in another week, we'll discuss some of the coping strategies and what you've done since this conversation. Don't get too stressed out or worried about it if it completely leaves your brain. If you forget about it, you don't get any of it done. That's totally fine. We'll talk about it again next week. And there's, there's always more to be done. So don't worry about it too much, but it was great talking with you. Yeah. So we'll speak, we'll see you again next week. Okay. Thank you. I don't know how to stop this.